All right, welcome back everybody. This is the long version of the video. We're talking about types five through eight. Hopefully you found your way here from the previous video. It was supposed to be the short version, came in at 15 minutes. Hey, uh, it's hard to get all this down in, in a short period of time. So just like I talked about in the first video, all the credit for the original type study goes to Roger K. Smith, who wrote Patented Transitional and Metallic Planes in America, Volumes 1 and 2. And then John Walter Stanley book actually has excerpts from volume one in there where it talks about the type study. And among other places, that's the main, there was the main sources for where I got this information from. There are some other online sources that you can find, such as Patrick Leach's Blood and Gore, um, Wooden Shop, Hyper Kitten, Valley Woodworker, uh, Hans Brumner. That's the book that you see up there with the color pictures at the top of the video here. And this is important to know pretty much everything that you see on this table is is for sale so i think that's one of the things that makes this youtube series unique is if you see something that you need for your plane let me know if it's serviceable or even if it's not serviceable if you're interested all this stuff is for sale but the main takeaway is that all the information was referring to the original type study which was done by roger k smith and he gets all the credit for that my goal here is to help you know basically do two things i want to help you identify the type of your plane and then i want to you know give you guys an opportunity to see guys and gals to see what these parts actually look like so that way when you see parts or complete planes or whatever you find them either in your collection you inherit them you find them in the wild you'll be able to identify what era at least within a certain time frame those things came from but remember where the type studies you know, it's based on the number four size planes. So it's not always going to generalize to the other sizes because John Walter, excuse me, uh, Roger K. Smith wanted to keep it consistent and wanted it to be, wanted clarity there. And just like I'm talking about in the other video, you know, don't get married to the type study because it's not something that is set in stone. It's not something that's exact. It's more of a, it's more of a guideline like the, uh, like the pirate code. So at no point did the people that were making these planes come into work one day and okay and say, okay, we're going to retool all the machinery because we're going to stop making type fives and start making type sixes. That is not at all the way it happened. They didn't classify it like that. But in this video, I'm going to actually show you the evolution of the frogs, for example, and show you how they changed over time. And then you'll be able to narrow yours down and pinpoint where, or excuse me, uh, when it was made. And then we'll do a little bit of that on the bodies as well. Not as much on the totes, not as much on the irons, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm not usually a big fan of cameras moving during filming, but we're going to give this a shot because I think it's the best way to capture this. So as you can see, Type 5s, 1885 to 1888. This was the first time that we saw a lateral adjust lever. So here's your pre-lateral for your Type 4, and then this is the first time that we see a lateral adjust lever starting in 1885. And then as we progress, we see the type sixes and you can see this is where the disc is introduced right here. So we're going to just, this is kind of an overview for you just so you can see what's ahead. And then your six alpha, I didn't talk about this as much during the short version of the video, but you can see there. And then your type sevens with the S casting, most of these are going to have a left-handed thread on your blade adjustment knob. And then on to our type eights, which is going to be the B casting. So that's what we're going to be going through and going into hopefully great detail to help everybody see the differences. So we're going to go over the evolution of the frog next. But before we do that, I just want to recap this from the previous video. For your type five and older, you're going to see the bead at the base of the knob. And then with the type sixes is when that bead went away. All of the low knob, or excuse me, all of the types five through eight are all going to be low knobs. The high knob was not introduced until much later, and that'll be on a future video. And they're all going to have the solid brass barrel nut there. So all low knobs, all solid brass for the knobs on the type five through eight. So now we're going to look at the evolution of the frog. So I got the type four frog out here just so that you can see how it changes. When they add the lateral adjust lever, 
Of course, they had to have this opening so that the lateral adjust would have room to move side to side. So of course, type four pre-lat versus type five, it's got the tab there to engage the iron. And then it's got Stanley written or etched into the lateral at the base. Whereas later, of course, we know that it moved up here. And then when you look at the type study, it'll say, oh, it's supposed to have two patent dates on it. So that will look like this right here two patent dates, one above Stanley and one below Stanley. But if it doesn't have it there, don't fret. Just flip it over because sometimes it will actually be on the bottom or on the back of the lateral adjust lever like so. So I've got a couple of them there that are on the back. And then I think this is worth noting as well. This is your pre-lat and you can see underneath where the blade adjustment knob goes. This is rounded off right there. All of the type fives that I have seen all have that rounded off on the back like that underneath where the blade adjustment screw goes in. So as we're moving from type five over to type six, notice how you're still gonna have that same small opening there even though they've now introduced the disc or the wheel for the type six. So that's gonna be your first telltale sign. And then instead of two patent dates, we're gonna have now three patent dates on the six. See the rounded part down here and then on the back just like i just talked about in the previous segment you're going to see this part rounded off right here as well so we've got some changes that are happening within the type 6 era so for example we've got this rounded area right here that at some point goes over to more of an oblong shape like so and then on the backs we're going from having the rounded off area underneath the blade adjustment screw where it goes in to having this more blocked or squared appearance here and then having the hole there. But these changes, I'm gonna go ahead and say, are not linear because you'll notice on this one that we have the rounded area right here, still rounded on this like size frog, but you can see where this one has gone away on the back from the rounded off to the squared up end. So still got the patent date on the inside. So this is still gonna be considered a type six frog, but then look at that right there. This is actually extended as well. So again, we're talking about evolution of the frog, but I've still got three patent dates on the lateral adjust lever. I've still got patent info on the inside. This is still a right-handed thread, have not gone to the left-handed thread as we see in the type sevens yet. And so, you know, bottom line here, we're seeing the frog evolve, but this is all within the type six era. And just as a side note, this does generalize across the various sizes of frogs. So we've got a, a si number two size here in the middle, still got three patent dates, still have the small opening right here. This is gonna be a number four or number five size coming in at two inches. And then this is gonna be a number six or number seven size coming in at two and three eighths but you'll notice the different variations on the same theme as far as the shape on the front and the back. But the, the takeaway here is we're talking about just all the variations that are in the type six era, and we haven't even gotten to the six alpha yet. But I wanna go ahead and take a break here for a second, and I wanna talk about frogs getting sheared off at the top. So this is a, an incredibly common thing. I mean, I think if a bench plane falls off the bench and hits the ground and it hits the top. That's how blades get bent. That's how totes get broken. And that's how frogs get broken off. The tops of frogs get broken off. But a common thing is they'll see that somebody will see the top of the frog sheared off like this right here and look at, oh, well, I can't tell if it's a prelateral or if it's, you know, a lateral plane. So, or a plane that had a lateral, I guess I should say. But this is this is pretty telling right here because on your pre-lat, you notice that the top of it does not open up because it doesn't need to accept a lateral adjust. So above the yoke, if you see it open up like this, then that's going to automatically tell you that you're looking at a type five or later. And then like on this one right here, the lateral is broken off the top of the frog still there. But we know based on what I was just showing you all a second ago, that this could be either a type five or a type six based on that opening right there. It's got the rounded area here, and then it's got this part rounded back here. So I'm going to call this one, you know, probably closer to type five, but there's really no way to definitively know 
without that lateral adjust lever being there. So now we're ready to make our jump from the type six to the type six alpha. And the biggest, biggest telltale sign for that is gonna be what Roger K. Smith denotes as a nib on there. So when you see that nib on the back, on the bottom of a frog like that, you know that that is gonna be a six alpha. Now what I've seen is that by the time we get to the six alpha, all of the sizes and all of the frogs have now transitioned to this particular back. So you no longer have the closed in, rounded off back below the blade adjustment screw. And then also by then, all of these, for where the lateral adjust rides, all of them have the elongated opening up there. Okay, so again, six alpha is where we're at now. So these were made from 1891 to 1892. And you can kind of think of that nib as a precursor to the casting marks because as we progress through and talk about the sevens and eights, the S casting and the B casting, that's going to be the same location on the frog where that was located. And we're now evolving from the six alpha over to the seven. And of course the nib goes away. It's replaced by the S and not all of your type sevens are going to have that S casting, most of them will, but not all of them. And you remember during the type seven is when we went from the right-handed thread over to the left-handed thread. And so they reversed that with the type sevens, but again, not all type sevens are gonna have the left-handed thread, but we've now fully evolved. We're now completely elongated here. We're elongated here, moving over to the left-handed thread all of these are going to be blocked off, squared off with the opening there. And then your biggest telltale sign for type sevens are going to be that S casting for the sessions foundry. And then we, we do still have the three patent dates on the lateral adjust all the way through type seven. And now we're going from the type seven to the type eight. And these are nearly identical with two major exceptions. We've now gone from the S casting over to the B casting. And we have now gone from the three patent dates on the lateral adjust lever to just one patent date on the lateral adjust lever. Everything else on these frogs is virtually identical. And so it is not uncommon to find a plane out there that has, say, an S casting frog, an S casting body, but then has a B casting lever cap, for example, because these two types were made back to back from each other and they are again virtually identical and so don't stress if your plane does not 100 percent match we don't know for sure or at least i don't know for sure if it could have come from stanley that way like maybe they shipped all of the s casting stuff that hadn't been used yet over to the v casting foundry or the assembly plant wherever these were put together uh, i don't know but you know you figure these planes are all in the neighborhood of 120 130 even 140 years old and so it's not uncommon you know these things have had a long life they've changed hands changed ownership a whole lot of times and so who's to say or who knows when broken parts could have been replaced in the past but if you're not as concerned about keeping your plane true to type for the most part most parts are interchangeable between types five and type eight, and especially between type seven and type eight. So that's pretty much it for the frogs. And that's a whole lot of froggies there. If you have any questions or comments, you know, by all means, leave a comment in the comment section here on YouTube or go to my Facebook page. Maybe you've run across something different. Maybe you have a specific question about frogs, or maybe you want to show us another anomaly of something different that you've seen. This is always all about open discussion. So if you've got some input, we'd love to hear it. So the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be the bodies. And if you watched the first video, I actually went through all of the number four sizes because they are based on, that's what the type study was based on is the number fours. But I do want to just go over a couple of things real quick. You know, I showed this particular body in the first one, you got the number four and I talked about the spacing there and how it gets a little bit wider as the years progress or the types progress. And then I talked about this flat frog base, but what's interesting here is it's got this number 73 that's cast back here. And if you look in the type study, it talks about how your type fours had the number 73. 
Well, this one can't be a type four because it was type five when the number being cast into the bed, the number of size of the plane being cast in the bed, that's when that was introduced. So we know this is a type four, but of course they were still putting the 73 back there. So that's one of the many, many variations that you will see on the different types. And so that's just one more reason why the type study is more of a guide. But if you can see here, I'm not gonna hold each one of these up, but if you can see here, number six, this is gonna be the type five, this is gonna be the type six. And then I don't have a type six alpha to show you with the nib on the body, but just know that it's behind where the frog goes. But these are fairly consistent, the numbering system for the larger sizes. And then I'm gonna show you one other variation. I talked about in the first video how we had the changeover on the sizing there between the type six and then the type seven. And you notice we've got the S casting back here. And so you see the change there. And then when we went to the B casting, which is your type eight, notice how the sizing gets quite a bit larger, but you can't get married to that type study because check this out. I've got another S casting here, right? Another S casting and look at that. It's got the same spacing on there. So you're gonna see all kinds of wild variations like that out there. Type study is just a guideline. Something else that's worth noting on your beds and your frog receivers is this is a, a number four size right here. It's S casting, so we know it's type seven. But you notice how the frog bed is not as it's not as long here. And again, this is a number four. With the number five, you can see where it's just maybe just a tiny, tiny bit longer, but really it's 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 probably pretty close to being the same size as what's on the number four there. But then on the larger sizes, your number sixes and up, you'll notice that it's got these, I don't know, what you call those wings, but it, it flares out at the back. And you'll see that across all of the different types where your larger sizes, the frog receiver has that, the wings on the back and when it flares out because the frog is shaped the same way. And also of note, on your number four here, for example, you've got the S casting that's actually in the bed, but on some other ones, and I don't know if this is size dependent or if it's just whatever mood they were in that day at the foundry, but sometimes they're gonna be underneath the tote as well. So same thing if you're out and you're looking and you don't see the S casting back there, well, sometimes you gotta pop that tote off in order to see if maybe the casting is underneath there. Same thing here and the number six size that is gonna be underneath the tote. And then that O right there, you know, that's, as far as I know, that's just another casting mark. I have not seen anything definitive on some of those other casting marks that are, they just vary from size to size and maybe from year to year when these were made. You'll see other variations on that as well, where you might have like a, a number three, for example, right here on the back of this B casting number four. And then I've got another B casting number four that actually has a four in the same place. So maybe the, the quarter that it was made. So in the first video, I did talk about the lever caps and you know, what I didn't talk about was the six alpha, which I'm gonna show you here in just a second. But remember for your type fives and type sixes, it's just plain on the front, it's plain on the back, no casting marks or anything. So, it's pretty hard to discern. I don't know if there is a way to discern between this and say like a type nine, type 10, really even type all the way through 12, really. Um, and then this is gonna be your six alpha. Remember I showed you the nib on the back of the frog or the bottom of the frog. So same thing, we know that that's a six alpha. You're not gonna see a ton of those, you know, it was only made for, for one year there. And then Here's your S casting for your type seven. And once again, not, not everything that came out of the Sessions Foundry is gonna have the S casting, so don't stress if yours doesn't have it. And then the B casting for the type eights. So that's gonna be the ways to tell the lever caps. And if you're really concerned about making 100% sure that your plane is, is correct to type, then those are the kind of signs that you wanna look for. Also on the topic of the bodies, I'm gonna cover this.
Remember, all of your frog screws are all machined flat on top. We're all the way through types five through eight. As far as the furniture goes, hopefully John Walters wouldn't mind me showing you all this excerpt from his book, especially if it's encouraging more people to buy it, uh, although it's out of print. But remember, we talked about the, the silhouette, if you will, and we talked about the the totes there or the furniture. So, and I talked about that forward lean. So if you're really wondering about that, I would say, you know, maybe pick up a copy of either Roger K. Smith's P. Tampia, which I have extras of the volume two, if anybody's interested, or pick up a copy of Stanley Tools, um, John Walter's Guide. And also the Valley Woodworker actually shows some excerpts from that as well, if you find him on the web. But as far as real world examples or real life examples go, um, I've talked about this on a couple different videos now, but this is for the size four and a half and up or number four and a half and up. You got the thicker base down there and then more of the forward lean on that. And I talked about this briefly on the short version of the video, but if y'all remember your early Type 5s and Type 6s are going to have the opening at the top of the iron up there. So you would slide the chip breaker up and then you could remove the, the chip breaker with the screw still installed by pulling it through the hole there. And then this one is going to be the P trademark. I don't have a good example of that to show you on an iron, but hopefully Hans Bremner doesn't mind me showing y'all in here the P logo right there. That's what that looked like you know, as of 1886 there. And then as far as your Q logo goes, as Roger K. Smith calls it in the type study, this is going to be your Q logo right here. And it was actually introduced in 1891 with the six alpha, with the type six alpha is when we first see that. And then this one, this Q logo actually stays all the way through the type seven and the type eight. All right, instead of trying to splice this in, and when I was talking about the frogs, I'm just gonna add it at the end. Uh, another change from when we went to our type six, really technically the six alpha over to the seven, other than going from the nib, I'll make this official, other than going from the nib to the S casting, was we also, that's when we see the patent information go away from inside the knob. And so, again, inside the blade adjustment knob. So patent info on your type six, no patent info on the type seven. And that's important because if you go to the wooden shop, specifically that website, and you're running the fault, oh, not the fault tree, you're running the tree there, logic tree, let's call it that that's how you're going to differentiate between those. They don't focus as much on the S casting on that particular site. All right, everybody, that's a wrap. If you made it this far without falling asleep or uh, zoning out or just shutting it off, good job. Congratulations. Uh, probably more than you ever cared to know about this particular section of the type study, five through eight. Uh, going to have types nine through 12 coming. You know, probably give me about a week or so. To get all that together, I'm going to have even more examples. And I think I'm going to show you uh, one major deviation from the type study that if it was redone, it would need to be added. So that's a little teaser for you. Um, also, of course, just like last time, please do share this video, especially if you see somebody out there wandering lost and they don't know what type their plane is. And it's got some type 5 through type 8 characteristics, you know, linked to this video or the short version. And that way we can... Uh, spread this information and I can get more hits on YouTube. So like, subscribe, all that good stuff and encourage your friends to subscribe because when I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a hand plane. I don't know which one yet, but it's going to be worth at least $50 or more. So encourage your friends to subscribe because when I get to a thousand, you could have a shot to win that plane too. Thank you.